Now what Charlie seven of ever go? Uh, we were doing a practice exercise from the ship, the USS American Legion. The changing tide and the slope of the beach meant 35 of the boats got stranded. The crane picked up the boats and deposited them back into the water. The last boat didn't get moved until well after darkness. The tide had come in, so all was going well. But then the motor stopped. We had to wait another couple of hours before we could get a tow out stern first. That's backwards. A breaker deluged the boat. We tried to communicate with the other boat to stop, but they didn't see our signal. And on the next breaker, the boat capsized. I don't remember hitting the water. When I broke the surface, there was a scene that became a nightmare. I naively thought that only women and girls screamed, but I quickly learned that men can scream too. Scream as they are dying. I took a deep breath and went under again. Hang on, sailor! We'll make the beach! Struggle as we did to make sure, we found ourselves drifting further and further out to sea. I desperately started looking for pencil, paper, and a bottle. I knew I was dying, and I wanted to write a note to my mother to tell her that I was thinking of her right to the very end. Then I passed out. In the sick bay, it took several hours for me to regain consciousness. My friend said, Boy, were you having a conversation? Who are you talking to? I was talking to God. He was on a white cloud flanked by two angels. That image is as clear now as it was then. I was adopted by the O'Brien family. They owned a milk bar. And every time I had liberty, we would eat dinner as a family in the milk bar. After that night, I arrived at the milk bar and I was met at the door by Mrs. O'Brien. And she said, did you hear about that awful thing that happened in Pike Arkariki last night? And I said, did I hear about it? I was in it. And I told her the story and she didn't say another word. But two weeks later, I received a letter from her. My dearest Frank, on the night of the 20th, I was very tired and retired early. I had a dream that you were in terrible danger. I got out of bed onto my knees and prayed to God to see you safely through your danger. I prayed on my knees for a very long time, at least 45 minutes. It was midnight when I got back into bed. I couldn't tell you this that night at the milk bar, but I wanted you to know. Your loving New Zealand mother, Jean O'Brien. We capsized at 11.17 and I was rescued at midnight. We knew it was 11.17 because all of our watches stopped at 11.17. They were not waterproof. The Board of Inquiry was chaired by Lieutenant Commander Jensen and during the inquiry he was putting pressure on me to blame Lieutenant Ackerman for the tragedy and I insisted that L Lieutenant Ackerman was not responsible for the tragedy and the result of the inquiry was that no one was responsible it was just a series of events where everything went wrong but Fifty years later, at a reunion, Grady and Betty Brooks sat with me at, uh, for breakfast and Betty said, you know, Grady was, knew an awful lot about boats before he joined the Navy because he worked at the marina in uh, Virginia. She said, he was the coxswain of the boat that pulled the boat off the beach in Pikeyaka Ricky where the ten sailors drowned. 
And I just sat there stunned. I said, you were the coxswain? I said, for 50 years I've been trying to find out who was that coxswain. And Grady said, Frank's blaming me for the death of those 10 sailors. I said, no, I'm not blaming you. I just want to ask you one question. Why didn't you stop when we hit the first breaker? He said, I did, but Lieutenant Commander Jensen was in the boat and he ordered full speed ahead. So it's no mystery now why no one was found guilty at the Board of Inquiry because the person who was responsible for it was heading the Board of Inquiry. The only positive result of this horror was that in the future all members of the shore party must wear life jackets.